Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. Because ultimately, favor is not linked to what you can bring to the table. It is linked to, you see, if, it is fa- if you call it favor because of what somebody brings to the table, then it's not favor. Favor has nothing to do with what you bring to the table. It has everything to do with what the one who is extending the favor brings to the table to do for you. I remember many years ago, we were living in a cooperative and uh, we needed a house. But we didn't have any down payment. Zero. And you need a down payment if you're going to get a house. Whatever down payment we had, we had already invested the year previous into purchasing this house. So we had nothing. And Mama spoke a word said, we're going to get our house this week. I'm looking at this woman. With what? Like how? A few days later, we, I was taking our daughter, Ashley, to her school. She was still in elementary. Wow. It's just a few years ago, not too long ago. Now she has children. And she points to a house that had a for sale sign. And she says, Dad, is that the house we're going to move into? I said, (laughs) no, God forbid. (laughs) We're not moving into that house. Because that house looked like the ugliest house on the street. Ugly or not, we did not have the money to buy it. But we were looking anyway. Somebody say, we were looking anyway. Yeah, we were looking. We had no money, but we were looking. Because favor will do for you what labor cannot. So we were looking, and nothing we saw we liked. And this particular day, we came with, with a real estate agent, and we came to this house. That's the house that Ashley was pointing at, that I said, no, we're not going to that house. It's an ugly house. And Mama and the real estate agent come out. They go inside. And they're pleading with me to come out of the car because I won't get out of the car. I'm sitting down there. When you guys finish looking, you come back because I'm not going to that house. Please just come. So I came. And as soon as my feet crossed over that door, threshold, it didn't even touch. As soon as I said, I said, this is the house. (laughs) What changed? While I was being rebellious and stubborn, sitting in the car, God could not speak to me. Somebody listening? While I was sitting down there, not moving, God could not speak to me. But as soon as I crossed, God said, this is the house. But we still didn't have the money. Where are we going to have the money? Somebody say favor. Favor. Shout it out loud, favor. favor. No money for down payment. And the real estate agent says to us, how much you want to pay for this? We, we told him what we heard from the Lord. This is the amount. It happened to be altogether 60, are you listening? Mm-hmm. $60,000 less than the asking price. Hmm? But this is where it gets better. There's a guy living in the house. 
that two weeks prior to us coming there had offered $40,000 more than we are putting on the plate. Are you with me so far? That means the landlord has an offer that is $40,000 more than we are offering, which is $60,000 less. In other words, all he needs to lose from our, our price and his asking price is 20000 You understand? So mom and I are in the office and our real estate agent calls and said, uh, can you guys sweeten the pot? We said no. What we offered, that's what we are offering. And we get a call back. You got it. It's yours. Guess who was selling the house? A Jewish lawyer. Do you think a Jewish man doesn't know money? Plus, he's a lawyer. And there's somebody in the house already that's offering him more that he just turned down two weeks before. And we get it. Tell me what made the difference. Favor. Favor. We found favor in the sight of the owner, and now we are going to find favor in the sight of the real estate agent because the real estate agent helped us. The commission that I'm going to get, I'll turn it over to you. You can use it for down payment. Is somebody listening? Favor! God is a God of favor. If God be with you, who can stand against you? God will rewrite the books for your sake. And so it was done for Daniel. Daniel. Daniel says, we don't want to eat the food that, that the king is offering. We want to eat something else. What do you want to eat? Um, just some porridge, some stuff we put together. Hey, man, do you want to kill me? If, the king, if you show up before the king and you're not looking good, it's my head. Do you understand that? And the guy still says, okay, do that. We'll give you a few days to do, to, to do this. And by the time they finished, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were looking fresher than the people that were busy eating all the goodies that the king had to offer. That was not what the king, or rather what God wanted the children of Israel to eat. I wonder if there are things that you and I are doing, trying to gather favor, that are contrary to the will of God, contrary to the word of God, and we think we'll get ahead and are not getting ahead. Now, the thing that you and I need is to do the right thing, recognizing that if God is within us, with us, for us, that there is nothing that will stop the promotion and the increase that God has on his mind for us. Amen? Amen? We need to engage. Recognize that God is for us. God is with us. He's with you. He has been with you. And now you must carry yourself as one that has been chosen by God, selected by God, imparted by God, carry yourself in that boldness to your workplace, recognizing that you are there to be a blessing. You know, Laban, Laban understood when Jacob wanted to leave. He said, you, you can't leave because the favor of God on your life is why I'm blessed. When people recognize that it is because of you, that things are going well, they will pay you better. Hello? Since you came into my life, things have been better. 
You cannot be outside my life. It will stop divorce. Hello? It will stop unemployment. Because you went there to volunteer. And as soon as you start volunteering, things start popping up. Things are getting better and getting better. The day you don't show up to work, things are going all over the place. All kinds of problems. You show up, everything settles down. Uh-uh. You see? Every time this, time this guy comes here, things change. Every time he leaves, things are not as good. We better keep him. Do they say, I'm leaving? So, uh-uh. Why? We'll pay you more. Uh, are you sure you can pay what I, what I'm, what? And then you talk to the Lord and say, how much do you think they should pay me? And God will give you his figures. That's what you put down. Listen, listen. When you are operating under favor, you can have a contract and your contract price is a hundred thousand dollars higher than the next person. And they will forget about the next person and still give the contract to you because of something called what? Favor. And that favor is based on what? The Lord is with me. Is somebody listening yet? This is an ingredient that cannot be missing from my life or your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 22 and verse 1. Will you know that all this that I've been talking to you, I've just been talking about introduction. Didn't even get into the message yet. Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than what? Great riches. This is, this is key. If you're going to operate in favor, make sure that you have what? A good name. And loving favor. Loving favor. Loving favor rather than what? Silver and gold. A good name. So I have to be chosen and great riches. And love and favor chosen rather than silver and gold. So you need two things. A good name and love and favor. And what are the bottom part? Great riches, silver and gold. It didn't say anything else. So there's a link between favor and riches. There's a link between favor and great riches. But that link is a link of favor, and favor is linked to a good name. There is a name that is above every other name. What's that name? Jesus. Where is that name residing? And where are you residing? In him, in heavenly places. In him, in what? And he had blessed you with all spiritual blessings where? In the earth. In the earth. In heavenly places. Oh, so guess what? If you want to move in this realm of favor, there's one place and one place alone that you need to pack yourself. In what? Heavenly places. And in heavenly places, there is tears and sorrow and thorns and thistles. There is poverty, sickness, and disease. No? No? In heavenly places, none of those things. So guess what? If I'm packed in heavenly places, what do I see? Only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell 
in what? In the house of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. In the secret place of the Most High. Abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. I must begin to think as one that is operating in heavenly places. That's how Jesus Christ our Lord operated. What did I say? That's how Jesus Christ our Lord operated. What did I say again? Take me to John 3, 16, um, John 3. I'm going to start reading from verse 12. If I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? If I tell you of heavenly things, if I tell you of heavenly things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which was. Which will be. Which is. Present tense. Which is. That's how. That's how you see yourself every day. I am in heavenly places. He's talking to Nicodemus in the earth. And he says, no one has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. I came down but I am there. Now this takes the engagement of our faith to understand and grasp that I am not stuck in the earth. I am seated with him in heavenly places. I am not separated from him. I am with him. I am in him and he is in me. And you know how that happens? Are you ready for this? It's a four letter word that starts with a Letter L and ends with the letter E. Not life. Life. Love. Love. You cannot abide with him if you are not walking in love. He that wants to experience friendship must first show himself friendly. If you want to experience favor, You've got to learn the practice of granting others favor. Not because they deserve it, but because I just choose to favor you. That's it. When you practice that, you are so in favor, and God will always bring you to favor. God will always bring you before men and women that will favor you. You will never present yourself before austere, wicked people. Amen. You will never. Listen, if there's going to be a wicked person across that desk when I come there, by the time I get there, they must vamoose. Do you understand? They must be removed. Because I don't stand before wicked people. Only people that will be a blessing to me will be across that desk. I want help. The right person will be there. If they are not going to be the right help, they must be removed. Because every knee must bow. To the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the one who lives inside of me. And because he is with me, I am blessed. And what? 
highly favored. One simple prayer I'm going to pray with you now. We're going to do this one act, and it's going to represent three things. One is going to represent you recognizing what you've got. Two, it's going to represent those that are to be a blessing to you, recognizing who you are, and therefore responding in that sense. Amen? Amen. Third, it's going to represent you recognizing not only who it is that is in you, but what it is that God has already done. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So three things. Recognizing what God has already done, recognizing who's inside of you and therefore who you are, and thirdly, others recognizing what it is that you have and are carrying who you are. Because when those three things come together, the manifestation is favor. There are people that you favor you that are not favoring you because they don't recognize. Oh, I didn't know. Have you ever been, ever been in a situation and say, oh, I didn't know it was you. If I knew that it was you, I would have done this such and such and such. Huh? No. There is not going to be any blindness. So I want you to touch your eyes. And we are going to cover all three things right now with this one prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that my eyes are open and the eyes of others concerning me are now open. They see what you have accomplished in my life. They see the glory of your person in my life. And I see what you have done in my life. Thank you, Lord, that favor is manifested in me, with me, by me, through me, because of your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I see favor. I receive favor. I walk in favor. I am transmitted in favor. I am in the atmosphere of favor all of my days. Nothing of this favor will ever befall me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because of this declaration, whatever it is that you are facing, I declare in Jesus' mighty name that favor will kick in and get you out of any situation that is contrary. Amen? Amen. Say, I receive the favor of the Lord. Say it again, I receive the favor of the Lord. It will manifest itself in every possible way that I need favor manifested in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. One more thing I say to you now. Now continue with this. In the realm of favor, you must surrender yourself to God's perfect will. What do I mean by that? When you step into favor, I know the word of God says that he will do exceedingly far above, beyond that which we dare ask or think. According to what? According to the power, his power, that worketh in us. Yes? According to his power. What power is this? Is the power of love? It is the power of the fullness of the Godhead in us. What did we just say about God being with us? What does it equate to? Favor. Yeah? So, in the realm of favor, you don't limit yourself to asking God for what you think. Yes. 
to instructing God on how he should do things. In the realm of favor, you rely on God, just like Esther relied on Hege and said, you choose for me. How many of you know God is wiser than you? God, I don't know what to ask for. But I ask that you, the God who favors, favor me. Favor me. Do for me what is the right thing to do. And rest. Make sure you carry yourself as a son of God, as a prince. Amen? A representation of God. An ambassador of God. Don't move around sheepishly like a sheep. Be <laughs> be bold yes. when you go to work carry yourself proper let anyone that is in there that does not stand for what God has ordained you for let them be doing the trembling yes. let them be the ones afraid you carry yourself boldly yes. like you own the place Carry yourself right. Do you understand? Yes. Carry yourself what? Right. Bold. Do your part. But never operate in the spirit of timidity. No. Huh? Just do your part. And you and I will be shocked at what God is about to do and has done but now must be made manifest in all of our lives in Jesus name Amen To receive a CD of today's program send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries Post Office Box 3990 Winnipeg, Manitoba R2W5H9 To order by Visa or MasterCard call 204-582-6795 Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.